Hello. As chairman of our product planning committee, I would like to comment on the film you are about to see. The design idea of the automobile you are riding in today was born in someone's mind at least three years before the car was built. And the men who originate these design ideas are called stylists. The nature of their profession is such that they must work behind closed doors. Since we cannot actually take you into our styling center, we have done the next best thing. We have produced a motion picture, which, as you will recognize, is an impressionistic version of the styling process. While the dream cars you will see do not blueprint the design of your car of the future, they do symbolize the stylist's continuing search for new ideas. That search is the subject of this film. That was a beautiful idea, and he almost had it. The hands, by the way, belong to a specialist in automotive design who is trying to grasp a dream and bring it down to earth. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the stylist. Takes place in the styling studio. The first person to appear will be the narrator. In this era of mass production, the industrial stylist has become increasingly important to us. Mass production can lower the price of an article until it is within everyone's reach, but who cares how ugly an article may be bought if it is ugly? Our lives would be barren and indeed if we had to surround ourselves with objects that were unsightly. And it is the industrial designer, the stylist, who prevents this from happening. He transforms utilitarian objects into works of art and thereby enrich lives. Imagine yourself now in a styling center. Behind every wall, sit the finest industrial designers in the automotive industry. They are fashioning the shapes of cars which you will see on the American road of tomorrow. Our story is about one such stylist with a very special assignment. Like most of the characters in our play, including myself, he's imaginary. Any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely unintentional. Speaking of imaginary characters, here come some old friends of ours, that ubiquitous and symbolical group called the Average American Family. Hello there. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you again. It's nice to be here. We were just driving by, so we thought we'd drop in and say hello. Are you sure we're not intruding? Not at all. Hey, how do you like our new car? Isn't it dreamy? I'm glad you like it. We're sort of proud of it, too. I'd sure like to shake hands with the man who designed it. Where is he? Well, right now, he's working on a dream car for you folks. A dream car? Wow, is it going to look like a rocket? Get propelled electronic control? I don't know. Is that the way you'd like it? I'll say. OK, I'll make a note of it. Any special features the rest of you would like incorporated? You know what would be just wonderful? A built-in vanity table that folds up. So you see, if I'm out driving with the top down, my hair gets in a mess, I can fix it right in the car before I get out. Why don't you put your head in a paper bag and save yourself the trouble? Oh, Daddy, make him stop. Children. Let's go see that style. This is the realm of the future where the stylist works. The realm of the future. Yes. You see, the dream car he's creating for you is many years ahead of its time. He has to project himself into the future or he wouldn't be able to design it. Well, 
I don't think we ought to interrupt him. I don't think so either. But I wish we could stay here and watch him. It'd be fascinating to see how he does it. Oh, yes. Couldn't we please? We'd be awful quiet. Of course you can. I tell you what I'll do. I'll make you part of the audience, and then you'll be able to see everything that happens. Make yourselves comfortable. It takes a very special combination of talents to create a new car. The stylist doesn't just sit up on a cloud dreaming up fantastic shapes for the cars of tomorrow. He is a very practical dreamer. Let me remind you that a car is a thing made out of metals and glass and plastics. These are the materials with which the stylist must work. And they do not lend themselves to idle dreaming. Designing a car is not just a problem in aesthetics. It is even more of a problem in metallurgy and mathematics and engineering. The mind of the stylist reviews the past, and he reflects on how strange a thing style is. For although we smile now at the fashions of yesterday, they were considered the last word in taste and elegance when they appeared. Our next scene will be a parade of fashion. You know, there's a curious thing about the human mind. It accepts what it sees. Most of us find it impossible to disentangle ourselves from the current style, whatever it may be. Someone must do it for us. And that someone is the stylist. He alone can break away from the present and create a fashion for the future, get ready a new look for us to like and live with tomorrow. Ah, the mind of the stylist has suddenly become intrigued by the old-fashioned rumble seat. Should he bring it back in a modernized version? It would mean room for two more people. Well, let's see how it would look. Not bad. It could be done, of course. Wonder if people would go for it. This is where the stylist's radar antenna comes in handy. You just tune in on the average American family. Gee, I think that'd be super as long as I didn't have to ride with Sis. Don't worry. I wouldn't be caught dead in a rumble seat. Think what it'd do to my hair. Rumble seat? What do we do with all our luggage? Did you ever try riding in a rumble seat in winter? Well, the nose seemed to have it. But actually, the reason why our stylist is abandoning the idea goes deeper than that. He feels that style, to be really valid, should be a part of its time. It should reflect the era from which it springs, not just the individual whim of the designer. To the stylist, the appearance of a thing can often express a whole way of life. Take the Model T, for instance. The silhouette of the Model T was just one step removed from the old-fashioned horse and buggy. And this describes the era in which it was born, too. The cars of today express our way of life, just as the old Model T did. This new retractable hardtop is a modern miracle of design and engineering and it reflects a new ease of living, a release from the back-breaking toil and drudgery of the old days when the Model T was on the road. The cars of today look like dream cars, and as a matter of fact, some of their most striking features originated in the dream cars of yesterday. This is the Mystere, a dream car created a few years ago. See how similar it looks to this model, which came off the assembly line three years later. Here's another dream car. And this is the new Mercury Turnpike Cruiser.
This is the Futura, a dream car designed in 1953, forerunner of the new Lincoln. cars of today will come the cars we see on the road of tomorrow. The stylist does not dream of fantasies. He dreams of the predictable future. Let us look now at the shape of things to come. How will the future look? What strange shapes will man create in the world of tomorrow? The stylist turns to science and research for the answers to his questions. He tunes in on recent developments and ponders their significance. Should his dream car reflect the shape of rockets flying into outer space? Will a free piston engine or perhaps a turbine drive the car of the future? Their shapes would radically affect his design. Research chemists are developing new fuels with tremendous power potentials. Can he cut down the size of the fuel tank and have more space for something else? How soon will atomic energy become a practical source of power for so small a thing as a car? The transistor means miniaturization of such things as radios and television sets, allowing him room which he did not have before. New alloys, new metals like titanium also preoccupy the stylist, for they too affect design. You must be aware of their characteristics and their behavior. Know just what happens to them when they are forged or stamped or extruded. Calculate their lightness and strength before he can use them properly. He must know all about the latest developments in glass and plastics too. And keep them in mind when he's designing such things as windows and transparent roofs. All these considerations finally fuse together in the stylist's mind, and an idea is born. He calls it a design theme, and once having arrived at it, his next task is to develop it with all the imagination and skill and knowledge at his command. This phase of the work calls for the most realistic thinking. You might call it the nuts and bolts part of the job. Every angle, every curve, every joint must be calculated with the utmost precision. Beyond that, the stylist must always think in terms of function as well as beauty, of skeleton as well as skin. The most beautiful door, for instance, is useless unless its design permits it to be well hung so that it opens and closes properly. The slant of a windshield calls for engineering, for it must be braced in such a way that it is structurally strong as well as streamlined. And the height and slope of a top is not just a matter of the right proportions. People must be able to sit under it without hitting their heads. Balance and symmetry achieved with the greatest mathematical precision. The geometry of surfaces and their arrangement to produce the proper optical effect of such things are the dreams of stylists made. The stylist develops many ideas for his dream car. Then finally comes a day of decision. This is a management review of the stylist's work. It's a beauty, isn't it? It's not going to be easy to decide which one we like best. Well, George, have you reached a decision? Yes, it's the X2000. I think it's beautiful. He's the man who really ought to know. 
He's George W. Walker, a vice president of the Ford Motor Company and director of styling. Shall we let the audience see what the dream car is going to look like? Well, I'd like to, but I think that uh, we'd better keep it under wraps for a while. <laughs> That's right. You've been watching this show from the wings. Is there anything you'd like to say about it at this point? Well, I'd like to emphasize just one thing. Some people may get the idea that styling is just a one-man job. And I'd like to correct that impression. There are a lot of us here in styling, and we all work together as a team. By the time a dream car comes out, or any other car, as a matter of fact, we've all had a hand in it. And that's what it takes to stay out in front. Thank you, Mr. Walker. And now that the design of the dream car has been arrived at, a whole battery of experts will begin working together to make the dream a reality. Secrecy is the keynote from now on. As we shall see, the most elaborate precautions sometimes fail. The spy. The following scenes were captured from a furtive character who sneaked into the styling center with a camera and are now released for the first time. Ah, there's the beautiful new styling building where the dream car is taking shape. That's top management looking over a new model in the courtyard of the styling rotunda. Hey, this is a sneaky shot, isn't it? It shows a conference between the stylist and the engineers. They're designing the inner structure of the dream car. The stylist works closely with the engineers during this stage and modifies his design if some feature of it is found impractical. It's lucky the figures block out most of the design so you really can't see how it looks. The stylist and the engineers evidently got everything ironed out. This is the next stage. They're modeling the whole car out of clay, full size. Steady, boy. This shows them making a plaster cast of the big clay model. Anyway, they are making fiberglass sections from a plaster mold. Another designer, styling the interior. He's putting the finishing touches on a drawing of a new instrument panel. I wonder what they are. New textile designs for the upholstery. When the final design is chosen, it will be especially woven into the fabric used. This man is fitting upholstery for the interior. And this man is tracing the design of an ornament onto metal with a pantograph. Every detail of the car is fashioned with meticulous care. One false note could destroy the whole effect. Tail lights are lathed from plexiglass. The metal parts of the car's exterior, such as the grille and the bumper, the head and the tail lights and the trim, are being made by expert craftsmen in shops that are equipped to make practically anything a stylist could design. Everything down to the smallest ornament is fashioned with jewel-like precision. They 
We're reaching the final stages here. This is going to be quite a car when it's finished. Hey, what's going on here? Thank goodness they caught him in time. And now, the night of the big premiere. Well, folks, here we are at the grand premiere. Lights, crowds, beautiful cars, beautiful ladies. What a spectacle. Hey, look at that. Oh, really? oh, really? A big moment has come for the stylist, for now all his dreams, all his work, will be put to the final test. His dream car is about to be shown to the public for the first time. And here comes the master of ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the big moment we've all been waiting for. You are going to see the most fabulous dream car ever made. And I think you'll agree with me that if tomorrow is going to look like this, it can't come too soon. And now, here it is, the X-2000. The stylist is very happy. Already in his mind's eye, he sees his dream car on the road of tomorrow. But now already, as far as the stylist is concerned, the beautiful thing which he created belongs to the past. New dreams beckon him. <laughs> 